On this week's ADCs of Wrestling, we're talking SummerSlam, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 4, Dave Meltzer, Colt Cabana, and lots of other stuff. But first, unfortunately, Jim the Anvil Neidhart passed away this week, and we lost a member of the Foundation. Rest in peace, Jim. And seeing as that this is a comedy show, I thought there was no more fitting a tribute than this clip of you laughing for 30 seconds from Wrestle Arcade. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Oh, hell yeah! Are you ready for a show with questionable wrestling impressions by a guy I know? It's gotta be ADC! Ooh, yeah, big it! ADC! Let me take you something, ADC! He watches wrestling! Matt the Mark is awesome, my Do you know you're ADC? Welcome to the ADCs of Wrestling. Yes, unfortunately, we are down one member of the foundation, but we are here to talk SummerSlam and NXT. Matt the Mark, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks. I'm your host, Andrew David Cox, the Weird Owl of Wrestling, if you will. We're going to talk, obviously, some SummerSlam predictions. We're going to do NXT TakeOver preview. Um, we've got some sad news to discuss, some controversy to deal with. And, of course, as always, we're going to have just two tweets. I think we might as well just get right into it this week. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Jim the Anvil Neidhart is dead at the age of 63 years old. That's a real shame. Um, obviously, great memories as, the, as a kid of the Hart Foundation, one of my favorite yeah. tag teams. Bret Hart, one of my favorite wrestlers. The Anvil, I mean, a perfect side uh, bar to him, like an awesome tag partner. His laugh that we played off the beginning of the show, <laughs> yeah. hilarious, infectious. Um, ran into some you know health issues at the end of his life, unfortunately, and, and is gone. And Natty is... It's sad, and the rest of the world is sad, but... Um, yeah, there was a ton of support online for Natty and everyone coming out. Um, she actually put out a nice statement as well. This one this one hits a little close to home. I mean, this was definitely our era. Uh, a little little early, but in, in our era, but definitely... I mean, I called era. our fan base, the fan base, yeah, the foundation. Exactly. We're exactly. huge fans. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, it seems like the last few weeks and months, really, we're just... We keep having to do this, so... I know, I know. It's really frustrating to have to keep putting this stuff in the show, but yeah. I feel like it does a disservice to the performers if you don't at least, you know, mention no, it. No, no, it's got to be it. there. Absolutely, it's got to be there, and obviously we want to pay our respects as well. Honestly, the heart attack is one of my favorite tag maneuvers, too. Whenever people oh, ask man. me about your favorite tag team finishes of all time, it's so good. the heart attack is right up there. It's yeah. so simple, but it's fantastic. It was nice to see the Revival use it this week as well. I mean, maybe not the spot that it should have been used, but it was nice to see that they at least paid tribute in that sense um, and using it in the match. So Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I mean, rest in peace, man. It's, yeah. This one this one was a tough one, finding yeah. out this week. Um, that, that What really hit me hard was that one picture that's been circulating on Twitter and online is the, the black and white image oh, of all of the Hart yes, Foundation with Bret with Hart Brett in, in the middle in color. Yeah. Everybody else is gone. That's insane. It's crazy. You know, like, wh what it makes me think is, I really wonder how Brett still finds it in himself to love the wrestling business. It's taken so much from him. His brother's gone. His brother-in-law is gone. His good friends are gone. His tag partner slash other brother-in-law slash long-life friend. And, and so many other comrades and just peers of his are gone and I know sometimes people make light of the fact that oh Brett's just such a bitter guy oh Seth Rollins is dangerous everybody's dangerous but like what would you be like if you were at Brett's age and all your friends were gone how, how is he how is he still so enamored with wrestling maybe it's all he has I don't know it's yeah sad. I don't I mean well it is his whole life right Was yeah. his whole life is his whole life um but at the same time this is kind of like not to get too I don't know, preachy about it, but like circle of life, you know, these these guys put their bodies and minds and health through hell for years upon years upon years. I mean, this this is just what happens. Unfortunately, a wrestler's lifespan is a little bit shorter than your average Joe, I guess. Yeah, it's scary. It, it, it really is frightening. And it, it makes you like kind of worry about I know the the whole party culture and stuff in today's wrestling landscape isn't really the same as it used to be. Yeah. But the guys that go a mile a minute. 
like the Will Ospreys yeah. of the world and the indie guys out there who, you know, you want to call them spot monkeys or whatever, who like to do their high spots all the time. They're landing on their head, especially a lot of the guys in New Japan with this Man. hard style that they're living. Too many brain busters for my liking. You, Great you, wrestling, but ugh. Yeah, you got to wonder where a lot of them are going to be in 10 to 15 years. Well, it's look at Daniel thought. Bryan. Perfect example, right? He comes yes. from that and essentially had his career ended, and thankfully it turned around for him. I mean, hopefully, but, thankfully. We don't well, even know what the long-term ramifications are of him coming back. Right? So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, it is what it is. It's it's unfortunate, but uh, it's going to keep happening. I mean, yeah. It's it's just I mean everyone dies. Yep. Plain and simple. Anyway, so. rest in rest in peace, Jim. Absolutely. You're fantastic. Gonna be missed. Uh, I'll real miss him on Twitter and on Natty's Twitter and on her. Uh, I know. Her Total divas man. and everything. Absolutely I often love watch with Barbara. Her and, videos of him and stuff. So. Yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah, that is tough. Um, another something that set the internet on fire yesterday was Dave Meltzer making some comments that <laughs> were not received very well about Peyton Royce and her appearance at NXT compared to her appearance on the main roster and his basically dislike for the change. I don't know if he's saying that he thinks that she was better before she had some enhancements done or what, but... Um, it doesn't even matter, He's under though. fire at this That's point. That's the problem. It doesn't matter. And people are coming to his defense and saying, oh, well, he didn't mean that she's put on weight and blah, blah, blah. Whether you're talking about her weight or her enhancement on her chest whatever it is it doesn't matter he's using her appearance as a point of talking about how he's not interested in her anymore or how she's boring it doesn't matter what he meant and the people defending her are the same people that are stuck in you know the attitude era with this crap it's i don't want to talk about it too much i, I know I it mean, needs to talk about it but oh man like even just thinking about it now my blood is boiling looking at some of the responses from people coming to his defense it's just and then he didn't even apologize. That's I, what kills I think, me. I think that's what kills me is his apology wasn't wasn't really on point. He's sort of passed the buck. Um, and it's not a great look for Dave to be talking about female wrestlers and his level of attraction to them as a member of the press. It is it is a weird thing. One little like not devil's advocate, but I just want to ask you what you think of the people who say it's a looks based business. It's the same thing as saying that, you know, guys have put on weight. Like, we would joke about big cast being soft in the middle. Like, maybe I should stop doing that sort of stuff, too. I mean, is that mean? Is that inappropriate? I don't want to be called out forever. You know, sure. we've, we've called out Cassio, Cassius Ono. I've said things about how I thought that Wolf, you know, Alexander, Alexander Wolf. Wolf. I'm like, I don't feel like you really work out that hard. Like, maybe that's too mean. Maybe that's judgmental. Maybe that's not the way of the future. Maybe, And, and you know what? It was. It was the way that WWE used to be, but it's it shouldn't be that way anymore. The other thing we have to keep in mind is these guys, and these people are actors playing characters, and they're wearing costumes. Yeah. This one, though, I think was different, where it was a personal attack on her appearance as to whether she was still interesting. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird it correlation wasn't like, to draw. No, and it wasn't like he was talking about, oh, her character isn't interesting anymore or this or that. It was it was a literal attack on her appearance, whether it was about her weight or her chest. It doesn't matter. But when we're talking about Cassius Ono and stuff and, and and not to draw comparisons too much, but like maybe we shouldn't talk about that stuff. And maybe yeah, that's maybe something not. we have to look at. And that's fine. But I also feel like stuff with Alexander Wolf and, and these guys is maybe they just their characters need to be portrayed a different way. I, I don't know. I, I, just, I mean, maybe it's just something honestly, we just don't mention anymore. Their characters make sense for what they what they are. Really, like they're guys that like I don't see Alexander Wolf and the members of Sanity like hitting the gym after a show. Yeah, like and, you know they're going out to cause some kind of anarchy, chaos, and just yeah. you know spray paint stuff. And I just I, th I think break we're windows. past it. Like I think we're past this era of everyone has to look a specific way, and I think that's just something we have to accept. I mean, they're they're actors playing characters in costume. I gotta say though, that pressure is still one hundred percent out there on all the members of the female role. Like, why Absolutely, do you feel? It has why to do be. you think these women all will feel the necess like necessary to do these things They're, to be accepted? Yeah, it's I, still out there, and it's hard to say. Like, say if it's being. I, I guarantee you, backstage. I've guaranteed thousands of dudes at home had that same discussion that Dave Meltzer had with Brian Alvarez, but it's just like. It's not a good look, man. Not no, on a podcast, it's, it's, especially. And it really, it's kind of a toxic way of thinking. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it's hard because, too, like, we, we just went through this whole thing with Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss, right? Where there was, yeah. it was literally uh, like an actual story written into the show of body shaming and so on. And I think WWE did that purposely to maybe say, like, hey, we're not for this. I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's a, 
it's a tough nugget to crack, and it's a. I, I don't. I don't think this will be the last we hear of it. Um, yeah. But I mean, if we look at the roster now, I think at least they've accepted that not everyone has to be a bodybuilder or look a specific way yep. in terms of like the females, males. It doesn't matter. I think Triple H had a lot to do with that. Absolutely, I totally despite agree. despite the fact that he was one of the greatest bodybuilders ever. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I just, I hope we can move, I hope... Except for one period in like 2009. <laughs> I hope that people actually learn from this. Uh, outside of Meltzer's ridiculous quote-unquote apology and saying that we all need to learn from this. When, I when think he we came back and do. was like, Peyton, you're a beautiful woman, I was like, oh my no, God, this that's is wrong. not the like, point, this, Dave. He didn't get it. Like Dude. He didn't understand what the issue yeah. was. I will formally apologize right now forever just even talking about how some wrestlers should be in shape or anything. I don't want to you know upset anybody. It just was my opinion, but... Maybe I'm dumb. It's not that you're dumb. I think we just, uh, I think just everyone have this, needs to change this, in yeah, general. This right? childhood image of all wrestlers being like, you know, chiseled from stone. But also, I didn't yeah. grow up in the South where wrestlers were like well, yeah. <laughs> big burly guys from the bar. Well, and it's funny because then you talk about, uh, like yesterday we were texting about this a little bit. And you said, you know, 10 years ago, this isn't even blinked at, which is true. But that shows maybe 10 years ago, it was also wrong. Why? Well, so there was a clip circulating on Twitter yesterday that I've seen a million times since this, the time it originally aired. It was probably from 2000. It was when Chris Jericho was in the ring calling out Steph McMahon for getting breast implants. Yeah. And I was like, man, have times changed. You could never do that now. Like never. one guy makes an offhand comment on a podcast and 15, 20 years ago, yeah. it's a segment of Raw. Yeah. Featuring The Rock and Stephanie McMahon, the yeah. boss's daughter. and it's, it's crazy. And it's funny, too, because even just going back to these people who are trying to defend Dave and saying, like, this isn't what he meant, it it doesn't matter because everyone took it a specific way. So it doesn't matter what he meant. He said what he said, and everyone took it the same way, except for a select few that are bending down. And yeah, I think, I'm not going to get too the rude. Pro- the problem like, comes with him using the terminology lighter. And I, I think if yeah. you were in the room, he might have used some floaty quoties there because he was talking about something else, but That's whatever. That's speculation, though, right? It's He yeah, said it's what still, he said, and it's still everyone pretty took anonymous it. Or erroneous. Everyone took it the same way, except for a slight few. Okay. So, anyways. I guess we can move on. Oh, hey. Hopefully we all learn from it. Yeah, hopefully we all <laughs> learn well, from and it. Well, the other thing, too, it's, sorry, just before we move on, on SmackDown, you had... Charlotte call out Carmella for being a diva, not for being more of a diva than rather being part of the women's era. Yeah. So, like this stuff is still built into into the shows. Well, was it last this week or last week? Carmella was like, "Look at my body and look at your body." That was this week. Yeah, I that mean, that's a little week. weird too. See, but now this is different. This is where this is actually like a heel. This is a bad guy in a show calling this out. This is where it's different rather than some. Yeah, but is that okay? Or warrior. if you're not allowed to even bring it up, then you just have to completely ignore that people are focused on people's physical appearances. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard because this stuff is going to be built into. TV shows going forward. It gets a little tough when it does. It when there's you can't a there's discuss a, anything. There's a gray area. Yeah, there is. But when you're building it into a script and people are playing characters, I think it's a little bit different than some keyboard warrior sitting behind a microphone. Yeah. In real life. Yeah, see, I, I feel like when it's when it's in character and stuff, we need to be able to bring these things out and say these kind of things. Because yeah, I agree. As long as there's, you know, some comeuppance or some kind of you know, pay off at the end of it. Like you can't just ignore that. That's what society's like. If yeah. you you don't want to sugarcoat everything, that's fine. But that ain't my WWE. <laughs> sure. Although anyway, that's, sorry. that's basically WWE. I now. wanted to bring that up just so I didn't forget. Yeah. But we Whatever. can move on now. Well, let's move on to hopefully some non-controversy. Oh, how about this? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Colt Cabana sues PM. <laughs> PM <laughs> sunk. Colt Cabana <laughs> hey, you sues know what? CM Punk. PM sunk might work a little bit better <laughs> here anyway. PM sunk. Um. Weird. It's weird how it turns out Punk maybe not is the the best guy in WWE. Of yeah, all I'm starting time. To, like is maybe is Punk like not a good dude? Yeah, I I mean, <laughs> I like I I said this however many months ago on the oh, show. Man, if, like, if this guy needs to earn if he legit my care. Like, if he legit like texted Cabana saying you're 100 percent covered, don't worry, you know I'm and basically being apologetic about. Colt having all these legal troubles based on what Punk said and then turned around and asked him for half of his legal coverage. Yeah. Like, ugh. And, and what about the legal fees that Cabana's paying now to sue Punk? Yeah. Like, it's not going to end up 
really being great for Colt. It's just going to end up being, you know, justice for yeah, him in a way. Pretty much. Yeah. It's it's not like he's going to make money here. At all. And, and I don't even think at this point, I don't think this is about money. I think this is more about no, it's my friend being a dick to me. Yeah. So bringing a few things to it. light. And, and it's funny because I did see a lot more people tweeting about, hmm, maybe CM Punk is a bit of a douche. Yeah. Maybe. Which is exactly how I felt. I don't even know how long ago it was that I put it on the show. <laughs> well, it was when we were talking about him going to All In and you saying right. basically like... I don't care. You don't give an F. This guy did has just like abandoned wrestling and all his fans and everyone else. And it turns out that uh, he might not be great. Yeah. Uh, also not great is the uh, injury, unfortunately, Tegan Knox Yuck. suffered at the May Young Classic tapings. I have not watched it. I do not wish to see it. Don't. But it sounds like she <laughs> broke her knee. Yeah, I'm... I mean, it's got to be in the show when they air it, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Like, they can't not. The rumor has cause... it that she was booked to go to the final, and they're going to have to pivot. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, so, I so mean, that's sad. for sure, but, oh, man, it sucks she's for super, her. She's like 23 years old. Yeah, yeah. So, she'll hopefully, be back, she'll hopefully. be back. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that is a devastating injury. My favorite thing that came of this was, are you up on the Skyrim meme about how the NPC characters always say, I used to be an explorer like you until I took an arrow to the knee. No. Okay, well, like when you walk around Skyrim, they always say, like, I used to be a warrior like you or an explorer like you or whatever until I took an arrow to the knee. And it's just one of those things that you hear so much that it became funny and it's become like a popular meme online. Really? So one guy just like... She posted a picture that she drew of yes, her knee. I was just gonna say that was that was one of my favorite spots. And, of and this. one guy drew like an, drew arrow, an arrow into it, and he's like, "I used to be an adventurer like you." So I thought that was kind of funny. No, I was gonna say one of the funny things that I got out of this was her tweeting out the picture that she drew of her knee, and oh, how yeah. like demolished it was. <laughs> God, like, I hope that's not my like, current situation. I hope that's not a portrait of the actual X-ray because that is scary. If so, it was yucky. I prefer the cutesy little drawing. Well, that's what I'm talking makes about. Makes me much happier. The no, I, I agree. I'm saying I prefer that to oh, the actual oh, x-ray. I, I understand. Say it was me, Matty. No. It's early in the morning. I, we've never <laughs> recorded this early. This actually is the earliest we've recorded, but I, I'm going to Montreal this weekend. I'm leaving at like 2 p.m. today, so yeah. I got to do this. Oh, hey. Unintentional segue. Speaking of people with horrible knees, Kevin Nash <laughs> won the big time wrestling heavyweight championship last Friday. So there's that. Okay. Congratulations. Woo. I watched it online. Come a clip on. of a guy. Really? I mean, I didn't like watch the event, but it's on uh, Twitter and stuff. Video? Didn't even know it was the thing. I'm not I'm not going to lie. I had oh. no idea. When I saw this in the rundown, I was like, "What?" He are you uh, talking he about? dropped he dropped the big old power bomb. Nice. For the 1 2 3. He still got it, eh? I mean, what power bomb did Kevin Nash ever really have? He just lifted guys up and then just dropped them like a feather. I, I just mean the fact that he was in a ring. Yeah, I wouldn't say he still it, got it. Did a, did a power <laughs> bomb. Wouldn't, wouldn't say he still got it. Well, you he's know. still out there. Well, we're gonna see him in a couple months. He's so. still out there. He looks good though, dude. Like man, he looks good for being an older dude. I can't like ugh. the crap that they went through. He should be in like. I mean, he's he's already in movies and stuff. Is like he was in yeah. John Wick. Is like the Russian yeah, bouncer yeah, and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, he was awesome. Um, he should honestly be in like some biker show or something yeah. where he's like the head of, I don't know, something. I'm, I'm glad Scott he's, Hall. He's still, still he's still a big sexy man, yeah, Kevin Nash. Yeah, and I'm glad Scott Hall kind of turned it around as well. I mean, he he obviously looks like he's been put through the ringer a little bit. Well, we've seen him on the show life, lately. He's, well, he's not doing a lot, brother. But he's I mean, the fact that he's doing still... DDP yoga with Dally, you <laughs> yeah. know, hanging out with Scott. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the Hulkster and I, you know, we go get some Jamba <laughs> juice, brother. You know. Yeah. No, it's do our stretches. I'm just glad they're they're still up walking, especially with all the friggin' deaths we've had lately. So yeah, yeah. Like you I see that, you see that video that Hulk tweeted yesterday. It was like him yeah, and, it was the three of them. Yeah, yeah. Hall and Nash with the NWO vignette yep. style. He's talking. painting the belt and I'm, something's something's coming. I I swear it's just it's going to be like some appearance or it's going to be like a I podcast or, or a YouTube series or something. They're putting too much behind this to just be a simple come out on Raw, do a couple finishers and leave. No, I don't think that's what it is. I think it's going to be their own thing. I think they're going to do like maybe. a YouTube series or something or maybe a WWE Network series where they oh maybe like they sit down and they talk about the WCW moments or whatever. Don't they already how, have how that many table times for can three? We, well, that's what I mean, like a table for three esque. But just show. NWO. Yeah, with just yeah, the three maybe. members, the founders, if maybe. you will, the foundation. I hope it's more than that. I hope so, too. Who knows? Yeah. Anyways. I hope so, too. You don't know shit. You don't know what the fuck they're going to do. I know I'm an insider. 
What the hell kind of an insider no, are you? No, you are not. You hang out in my basement all day doing absolutely nothing. No, that's that's not true. I came up last week and I tried to get you to throw me a beer. I tried to get interactive. You tried to get interactive. He, he pushed you out of the way of, my, of the mic and took over, yeah, too. That's people right. People enjoyed that. People enjoyed that a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Fucking right, they enjoyed it. I used to put asses in seats, and that's the bottom line. Because I'm basement. I'm, I'm, I'm stone cold. What the hell's my catchphrase again? <laughs> stone cold said so, you moron. That's right. Because stone cold said so. <laughs> Why don't you make yourself productive right now and go outside and cut my grass? Oh, you want me to cut your grass? What? You want me to trim your greens? What? It's, yes, I do. All right, I will. Shit. Yeah. Okay. You will? Yeah, I'll make my ass productive. I'll see how you feel about that. Yeah, I'm fucking piece of crap. I see that I can't cut no grass. It, okay. I think he's going to cut the Is grass. Is he actually going to do this? I don't know. He disappeared, though. Well, all right. Meanwhile, outside of the house that ADC built... ADC, I'll show your ass. Huh? You think I can't cut no grass, pull my own weight? What? You think I can't use a lawnmower? Hey, what the hell's that? Get the fuck out of here, YouTube thing! Goddamn, kid. That shit almost took my head off. If I had hair, you would've balded my ass. Anyway, let's start this sub bitch up. Come on now. Come on, baby, yeah! Oh, your ass is purring now, and that's the bottom line. Oh, hell yeah, let's cut some fucking grass. I'll stomp a mud hole in this long. Actually, he probably wouldn't appreciate that. When ADC sees the pattern I put in this, he's not going to know whether to shit or what his watch. He's going to be all discombobulated and beside his damn self. I'm going to make it like a wrestling ring. Put some ropes over here. we we'll dig a little hole right here. Could be where the ring post goes. Oh, hell yeah. You know I'd be proud of this shit. The Bludgeon Brothers. Bludgeon Brothers. Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, God damn, there's sure are a lot of weeds out here, ADC. You should get off your ass. Hot blooded. You know what I mean. Cutting grass. Kiss my ass, ADC. I'm fucking hot blooded. Should we talk about NXT TakeOver Brooklyn? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. It's going to be so good. I'm caught up, Maddie. Did you finally, you caught up? I am. Hey. I always try to do it before TakeOver, man. Which is funny because I just moved into a new house and long story short, didn't get cable and internet until you yesterday. Went dark. It went dark for about five days, which was really weird. But yeah, I miss, I actually missed yesterday's go home show for NXT. So I'm caught up until yesterday. So you'll have to fill in. Uh, I saw it, but I have <laughs> terrible recall and I work super late. So uh, it's it's spotty. It's fuzzy. My memory is fuzzy. Uh, we might as well. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up. Okay. We <laughs> might as well, I guess, sort of go through the card, go through the card. But this card's sort of reversed. You want to start at the top? Yeah, we might it, as does, well it doesn't matter which no. way we put. We don't know when these matches are going to be on anyway. I so. got this from Wikipedia. So why don't we start with the ladies? We're talking about Shayna Baszler versus Kari Sane for the uh, women's NXT championship match. So something awesome that actually happened on the Go Home show that you missed was okay. Kyrie Sane came out and she, well, I got to say, how are you going to do my girl Aaliyah like this, Kyrie? Because oh, yeah. she's from Toronto. I like Aaliyah. I think she's great. Uh, but anyway, Kyrie had a match, a little warm-up match, you know? Of course. Uh, yeah. A squash, if you will. Yep. A squash special. A squash. We got here a little squash. <laughs> nope. Uh, yeah, fucking so, I guess. <laughs> um <laughs> Can I say that? I, I'm, I don't want to offend anybody anymore. <laughs> anyway. No, no. Fuck Enzo. Okay. There we yeah. go. Now that we've doubled down, yeah. we'll just get in twice as much trouble. Um, <laughs> so basically, she came out and Shayna Baszler was on commentary and nice. Kyrie went ahead and decided to drop the uh, the pirate elbow. Yeah. Is, that, is it called the pirate elbow? I don't know. I it's one of the sickest it's elbows in though. all of it's wrestling. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, she comes down like a V. It's unreal, yeah. But anyway, she dropped it, and then she looks at Shayna Baszler because Shayna basically called out and questioned whether she has, you know, the you know, the chutzpah to be the toughness, the <laughs> yeah. balls, if you will, yeah. to uh, to you know go head to head with her. So she looked at her and she went up. She did it again. Then she looked at her. She went up. She did it a third time. Nice. And then she pulled her up after a two count. And then put her in the anchor nice. until Aaliyah tapped out. And while she was doing it, she pointed at Shane on commentary. So it was pretty awesome. See, oh man. The heat level was so up there. So good. See, and that reminds me of a couple months again, ago. again, how are you going to do my girl like that? <laughs> well, I mean, Aaliyah hasn't been on TV for a while. I mean, she's been killing it at the house shows. I kind of miss while, Aaliyah's but. old music and the little cat ears, but. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, the cat ears were kind of weird, but yeah. whatever. Uh, either way, I this just kind of reminds me of. Fantasy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Reminds me of Shayna Baszler going back. I think before the last, last NXT takeover. Yeah, she's back. Anyways, where she came out and instead of it was with Dakota Kai and Dakota Kai has been scared of her and instead of going out and choking out Dakota Kai, she actually choked out like the yeah. whoever the yeah, hell yeah. it was in the ring. Was it Candice like, LeRae? No, no, no. It was Dakota Kai back then, and then oh, okay. I can't remember who she. I think it was Vanessa. She choked out. Anyways, Vanessa it doesn't Warren. matter. But it's that indirect like create fear. That yeah, it's just so much better than them actually coming to blows in the middle of the ring. Well, Shayna had so kind of. She was kind of shook too. She yeah. had that look. She's like, oh god, Kyrie does have that extra gear. But um, the buildup for this match has actually been quite good, even because obviously Kyrie her um, her. English as a second language isn't super yeah. strong. Well, they did that segment with William she Regal last week. She just kept saying week. the same thing over yeah. and over again, but yeah. at least it's something that's effective and it's kind of building in, and they built it up over a couple weeks. So it's I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to this match. It's, I don't know how to pick a winner in this, though. I'm assuming Shayna's going to continue to roll with this. I, th- I think Shayna should retain. Shayna's yeah. been, although, unless they want to bring her up to the main roster, because honestly, Shayna Baszler is fantastic. Um, she, like... I could see her coming up for her, evolution. Her though. character is awesome. Like it's her character brilliant. work is really, really good. It's she's brilliant. believable. She's intimidating. She's yeah. scary. She's got the soft spokenness too that makes it even a little bit more terrifying. Yeah, but yeah. she's she's honestly really thriving, and uh, I enjoy Shayna Baszler a lot. Also, people always ask us about our favorite themes right now. Hers is up her there. theme is yeah. so good. <laughs> It's so simple. Uh, yeah. Um, as much as I sometimes like to rag on CFOs for, you know, kind of being a, a <laughs> yes, fast food do. menu of themes. Yeah. Because, well, tell me that, like, EC3. No, no. And it's, I'm, I'm like, with you. Kona, uh, Kona Reeves oh, and, God like, boy. I don't know. And any dude who's, like, a jock who's cool has the same, like, rap <laughs> chorus theme yeah. where it's just, like, guys repeating something with a hip-hop beat. Yeah. And, like, a lot of the chicks e- all just have C3. the exact same, like, kind of techno stuff. It's, it's very similar. Yeah, I don't like this techno stuff that's going on in NXT right now. It's they just they're trying to be it's very weird. like mainstream. I also I always I wonder like who are the rappers that do these songs? <laughs> who are out there just like rapping about EC3, yeah. Maybe <laughs> like, who are just, these guys? Maybe they just have a team of guys that can It could do be it. it could be a couple of them, but everything sounds like it was done by Mike Shinoda from Lincoln Park. <laughs> oh boy. Like it just sounds like he's on retainer at all times maybe. just to come in and record songs for them. <laughs> but uh, I, I like a lot of the instrumental stuff, like uh, despite it being extremely derivative of everything NWO slash DX melded together. The Undisputed Era theme is awesome. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it is. But you can totally tell, like it's got the twangy guitar because it's it's taking, you know, it's playing on the Jimi Hendrix yeah. Hogan thing. You've got like Kyle O'Reilly playing the guitar like the, the title belt like a guitar. Yeah. And then you've got like the lyrics in it that sound like the lyrics from the DX theme and a bit of the screaming. So it's it's clearly yeah. inspired by. And then their vignettes are totally NWO vignettes. So sure. they're, they're more NWO than like <laughs> the Bullet Club than anybody. Anyway. Sure. That's a rant. I went <laughs> that on a was tangent. A, that was a tangent. So I think Shayna Baszler's going to retain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she is too because I think it'd be kind of cool to see her keep this for a little while going to Evolution with that belt. Yeah. Especially considering Rousey is likely also going to be t- title holder. Oh, so. also random point about themes. I know it's a super easy thing to do, but Kyrie Sane's theme, I like it because that's a wrestling theme because it's based on the character. It's yeah. not just a song. That's true. That's very true. Yeah. It's a pirate it's still, song, so it's pretty easy to go there. But like, actually, I'm going to ask like themes. Anyone who's who listens to the show and follows um, New Japan more than us, where does the pirate theme come from? I mean, things in just, Japan are very different. There's yeah, a lot. Of, that's why I'm like, wondering, like, just because I I don't know it. Like, I'm not going to. It is it is know. weird. It's, I was it's just a wondering, hilarious gimmick. I'm a pirate. Like, she comes out with the hat and she's got the wheel and, and like boom, the yeah. Boom, I don't know. Boom, boom, boom. Just anyway. curious. Enlighten it's, me. Yeah, it's very, I'm it's very, very strange. To it. Okay, let's talk about Tommaso Ciampa taking on Johnny Gargano. Yeah, um, it's going to be great. Obviously, this changed. I would have been a lot more excited if this were going to be that triple threat because it's never been of defended course. in a triple threat. Would have yep. been amazing. They also did this really cheesy who done it video campaign on NXT last night. <laughs> yeah, where they showed. Alexander Black laid out outside, and then they went through with cameras. They'd be like, "Now here we see EC3 walking away, <laughs> and over here is uh, you know Ricochet by the production truck." Blah blah blah, and they, yeah. it just like it looked like the set from like a Clue movie that everybody was just outside at the same time <laughs> doing Colonel something Mustard different. In the library with the rope, <laughs> like heavy machinery, where they're taking shots on their phones. It's just like awesome. It was really it was campy. But I didn't you know, like it some at of all. that stuff is it fun. was cheese ball, man. It's supposed to be cheese ball, but it was taken because so seriously. It was presented. Everyone knows 
everyone knows that this was to cover up for the actual injury. So I know, I know, I know. Ha- I, I feel was, like was, in this it has to be a little cheesy. It was presented by Kathy Kelly, like a super serious really? segment, but it was oh. just like, and it was, it was so cheesy. <laughs> it was, it was, it was dumb. I, lo- I don't know. I'll, I'll go, I'll go and watch it and see it. But sometimes I like the cheese with stuff like that because it makes me laugh. It was just funny that they all happened to be like outside doing a different <laughs> the activity at the roster, time. Yeah, <laughs> it was like the Orient Express. It was like over here, this madam was up to no good. Interesting or was movie. She? Interesting movie. Never seen it. Oh. Just referenced it for no reason. <laughs> Um, exactly what it was, though. Yeah, th- this was for just two tweets, but Mary Carr asked a good question earlier. She said the yeah. matches Champo and Gargana have had are really just a variation on Last Man Standing. What do they have to do to make this one stand out? Since it won't be a wrestling match, as Matt suggested last week, it's Man. true. And and you guys had a pretty good discussion about this, but like I lo- I loved that it was it was almost like two hours after we recorded that it came out that it was going to be a Last yeah. Man Standing match, which I'm I'm still disappointed. I was actually really excited to see these guys just have a match. I, I don't think Last Man Standing was the right stipulation. No, I it, it, they could have done so many different things. I just it's going to be a Last Man Standing match because we haven't seen that already. But yes, we have. We have seen it, and that's I think that's. Oh, man. I mean, I guess they had to get three counts, so now this time they actually have to get the ten count. So now you actually really have to like demolish your opponent. And somebody's gonna have but to like just, break a cinder block over the other guy's head or but, something. Well, and that's it. Like, how much more can they do? That's a, like they exposed concrete and power bombed him off the apron onto it. They exposed the mat and did a like handcuffed, no handed DDT onto it. Yeah. Like, how much more can they've jumped off equipment? Like, they they have to leave the arena at this point, right? I just yeah. I don't know what else they can do. I, I don't know. I, I'll be completely honest with you. This is a bit of a hot take. I'm not that excited for this match. I'm not that excited for this match. I mean, I can see where I've you're coming from. I've seen it before, from. and both of their matches were like 40 minutes long. Yeah, and, and I definitely see where you're coming from. I still think that they're going to find a way to do it. Oh, We're I'm just, sure that they'll prove me us. wrong. They're way smarter than us. But I'm not excited. Like, going in, when we get to the main event, I'm not going to have those, you know, tingles, those feels. Or like, yes, it's finally happening. I'm going to be like, okay, yeah. now how the hell are we going to make this in? Especially since it's been three consecutive takeovers, yeah. too, right? It's not like this has gone on over I a get year. Bored. It's just been like six months. I get bored. And For I watch sure. so much wrestling that I, you know, it even, was more even like Seth Rollins matches and everything. Like I start to roll my eyes when I see the same spots all the time. Like I don't yeah. know how many times I can see a superplex into a Falcon yeah, Arrow yeah. for a two count and things aren't special and anymore. not hate it and just yeah. be like, stop doing this move. Like it doesn't work. St- try something else. If you want to be a kayfabe about it, yeah. that never gets the pin. Well, and that's why <laughs> like AJ Styles, he doesn't always do um, yeah, his the 450 splash yeah. or the forearm or stuff like that. So there's these, I it's things don't feel special anymore because it's on TV weekly it's too and much. they have to it's show it much. every time. But yeah. either way, it's um, I think I, I think Chapa's gonna take this. I think he I think he retains. I'm still excited for it. I I, I think it was cool. more intriguing when it was a triple threat, but I I just for whatever reason I don't see Johnny winning the belt here. It's more it's better. I see with I see Champa retaining as well, and yeah. then maybe Gargano showing up on Raw or something. But uh, do you find Gargano like hard to like right now? His character is kind of it's he's different. pushed to the edge. Yeah. But he was like everybody's lovable favorite little underdog character. And now he's, he's kind of like anymore. a whiny bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, fuck. No, I, I agree. get over it, man. I agree. I you cost people titles now. You just run around with a sourpuss on your face. It's direction may have changed a little bit, too, because obviously Black's injury, but. So maybe they were going somewhere with it that it would have made sense, but now it just seems like, I don't know. Yeah, it's I I kind of agree with you on that point. Yeah, maybe he loses and he goes back to. I don't know. I actually don't know. I don't know. Adam Cole versus Ricochet for the NXT North American Championship. I'm not interested in this. This is gonna be a terrible <laughs> match. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> You're lying. So and so. It's gonna be so good. Yeah, it's gonna be the match of the so night probably. Good. Probably the match of the night. Yeah, honestly. and I think so. Uh, that or that or the tag team match. That's true. Tag could be good too. Because their um, their NXT tag team match was ridiculous. I kind of I, I I think they might put the uh, North American title on Ricochet. You think they, you think they'll make the change? I think they might. Yeah, that's interesting. That's my prediction. I think. Oh. I, I mean, Adam Cole's been in NXT for a year now, so maybe they look at bringing. The undisputed era up, but this isn't a typical like call up spot. No, you don't have to do that. Put him in the title scene. Interesting. He's got a mid card title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. And and maybe that's. Oh man, this is a tough one. Ah, I'm gonna go with Adam Cole retaining. I just okay. don't. I don't think it's time. But oh man, that's a 
Damn. Well, if jo- if Johnny Gargano wins, then you could have Adam Cole Gargano as a program. That'd be kind of cool, but you never know where they're going to go in NXT. No, it's so true. Know. That's why NXT is so freaking good because it's way less unpredictable. Yep. Way less Predi- predictable. <laughs> <laughs> predictable. Way more unpredictable. So, I, yeah. moving <laughs> on, the Undisputed Era are taking on Mustache Mountain. Um, oh, Tyler is- Bate and Roderick, Roderick Strong, they sold... Not a thing last night, and <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, it was great. I've, I've I've heard that the match was awesome. It was um, good, and like I just mentioned, like two, a couple weeks ago when they had their tied title match and they switched hands, that match was ridiculous. They went a hundred miles an hour and they just yeah. didn't stop, and yeah. nobody sold the damn thing. So I think I think I think this could actually end up being match of the weekend. So it could. Yeah, it definitely could. I, I think they retain though. I Mustache Mountain I think is more destined for NXT UK more yeah. than yeah. obviously. I hear that too. Here, so. I think it was kind of a fun thing to do in the UK and have them it win made the sense. titles and all Absolutely, that stuff. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I would I would be more invested going forward in an undisputed era tag title oh, situation, especially if you're right and Cole goes for the championship and wins it, and they have like those three titles. <laughs> I've been enjoying the vignettes backstage with the undisputed era where Bobby Fish is just not able to do the thing because he's like holding the trophy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps looking at it. He's like, damn it. I also love that they, the three of them have belts and then he has a trophy. Yeah. <laughs> like, and he's holding it with like the tea time, yeah. the tea time held. He's yeah. like, well, I'm injured, but I have a trophy. So <laughs> deal with that. Um, then of course, Velveteen Dream versus yeah. E3, C3. This card is ridiculous. It's so great. You've, you've got to go back and watch NXT from last night. Because I will. I will. Velveteen had this really sweet, like low hanging, fucking um, fanny pack on oh, when he came out to the ring <laughs> and EC3 called him out on it it was awesome did he trip over it uh, well Velveteen comes out and he kind of cuts a promo on on how um, you know at first you had my curiosity yeah uh, but now you have something that nobody wants you have the the dream's interest or whatever <laughs> the dream's attention that's what he says so everybody's like oh and EC3 comes out and he's like is this what it sounds like when doves cry and then uh, everybody saw, starts I chanting I when doves a, cry of the meme about that yeah but then he comes in and he's like dope fanny pack by the way <laughs> <laughs> and dream just like takes his glasses off he's like Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> you make fun of the Dreams fanny pack? Uh, it was pretty good. And then um, they uh, they had fisticuffs, but then EC3 okay. ended up getting his 1% on him, which was kind cool. of a cool finish. Cool. I don't n- really know where this one goes, um, but now that you've gone back and you've seen like a couple of the vignettes, what do you think of some of those? I only saw the one. Wasn't it the, the one where he invites him over to the pool and all that stuff? Didn't and they then, do a couple? Oh, and then like- there was the one where he's like in front of the green screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. they're good. They're good. The, what did um, you think of the hotel the, pool, though? The pool was was strange. <laughs> it was super weird. Even how he just like gets him and throws him into the pool, like they were gonna shake hands. I, I, I like, felt like they were gonna kiss or something. Yeah. Like it was just like oh, I thought you were gonna push me in the pool, and they were like laughing. But then all of a sudden they're really angry at each other, and I'm like, this is weird. It is weird. Yeah, but maybe it's supposed to feel that way. But at least it's something, right? Oh no, it's like, great. It's great. Anyways, I it's entertaining. It, it's camp. It's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. Who wins? Dope fanny pack, by the way. No. <laughs> Thanks. I only wear it on special <laughs> occasions. Uh, I just love that his fanny pack was like all low and hanging down. I got I to gotta watch it. I won't get to see it in, until after. Oh, damn. I'm the not reference gonna, to the fanny pack is so good. I'm not even going to get to. I just thinking about this. I'm not even going to see TakeOver until Monday. Well, that sucks for you. Damn. I'm probably going to watch it on Saturday night. Stupid Although Montreal. I may be with uh, the valet, if you will. I'm trying to think of a way to go to a bachelor party weekend in Montreal and still watch NXT. Yeah, it's not going to happen, man. You're going to watch it on like Sunday night or whatever. Or Monday. I'll probably watch SummerSlam. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of SummerSlam. Wait, did you pick who he's going to win? Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like it doesn't way, even is, matter. Apparently, is E3, is EC3 is a face now? He was totally a heel, right? Until they just kind of yeah, I think they tried going head to head, and like, I guess EC 3s face because somebody needs to be face. I think he's one of those guys that can probably flip super easy because he can be that cocky douche that everyone hates, but then he can also he's totally kinda, a, key, a heel character though, like for sure. It's really hard to it's be like exactly what Bobby Roode was. Yeah, it's it's really hard to be a fan of a guy who says he's in the top one <laughs> percent. <top 1%. laughs> yeah. But speaking of themes, people were uh, definitely singing along. Like, oh, yeah, wholeheartedly to that song. I also I love that he's got the timing down when he points to the letters on the screen. That come. Yeah. I, I really like that interaction. Now I'm down with EC3. I'm going to. He was one of the bright spots in TNA for a for long sure. time. Dream hasn't won in a while. I feel like he needs a win here. But he's also the heel. And no, you know what? It's there's you're nothing right, here. though. It's, it's kind of time. 
It would, it would make more sense for them to give Dream a win. Yeah. Because he's sort of been there a little longer than EC3. Dream I'm going to go with something. Dream. You know what? I'm going to go with something. Dream. Because Dream, Dream lost to Ricochet. He did. And he didn't win the ladder match. No. Wait, I don't, I'm trying to think of the last time he actually won. He didn't beat Black, obviously. No. It, like, it's been a while. So he, he could be due. And maybe, you know what? Maybe, maybe he's, he's the that, next one. Maybe he's that guy, though. Maybe he's like, the guy. Maybe he doesn't need wins, as dumb yeah, as that true. sounds. You know what, though? His character is so strong that you're right. But then, he, then you become Bray Wyatt. Ah, oh, that's true. That's <laughs> then you true. become Bray Wyatt. <laughs> so true, which apparently he's, so he's strong. For Follow the team. buzzards and I lose every time. Um, I'm going to take Dream to win, and I think maybe it'll springboard him into North American Championship territory. Whether it's with Cole or Ricochet, I don't know. But Okay. I don't Let's know. make it Why interesting. Yeah. I'll say EC3. Okay, fun. We don't keep track of our prick picks on the show anyway. No, so what's the point? we are literally not <laughs> writing this down. <laughs> yeah. When are people going to catch on to that? When are people going to be like, so who got what right and wrong? I, th- I think the first three or four pay-per-views I took, I wrote them down. Yeah, like, no, I don't care. I just talk about it and who I think is going to win. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody's checking no, it out to be like, no, wait, no. so is ADC better picking or is Matt the Mark better picked? Nobody cares. I don't, half of this is fantasy booking anyway, too, right? S- someday some fanatic will like write down all of our picks and like tweet us with them. And we'll be like, oh, thanks for doing that for us. Mm, I highly doubt that happens. <laughs> uh, maybe someday. Wow, we are uh, we are going really long here. All right, let's do it. Uh, let's like honestly quickly feel like run a through lot, the summer da- slam card. I feel like a lot of this we're gonna skip over anyway. Cause. I am gonna go from the bottom up for SummerSlam. Let's start with the B team versus the Revival for the uh, Raw Tag Team Championship. Honestly, just give it to the Revival. Revival let's end this gotta B win team this. garbage. Yeah, and that stupid Revival theme. gotta win this. Give them the first loss. I I mean, there's really no build up for this, but. Oh, man, get the B team out of here! Like they gotta. I, as much as I like them, they're funny. They just, I don't know. The theme killed it for me. They'll go back into the chase, right? They'll lose. They'll get their rematch. They'll be part of the chase. But the tag division, as in general, just needs to be shaken up. And it sounds like Matt Hardy and Bray are <laughs> Gonzo. So yeah, lots of speculation that Matt Hardy's retiring. A lot of cryptic tweets. Yeah. Not even so cryptic, really. Just being like, my back and my butt are fusing together. Yeah. So I'm back gonna and, leave soon. Back in pelvis, and then you got Bray talk. I mean, we'll see it in just two tweets. Yeah, but Bray's gonna change. It sounds like he's looking for a new theme song. So yeah, from like Avenge Sevenfold. And yeah, Parkway well, hey, Drive. Hey, if they if they make it happen, I'm I'm in. I'm good. I I, I would like Parkway Drive. That'd be good. Yeah, I'd be good with um, Parkway. Rollins is a huge fan of Parkway. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, Rusev is back to complaining about being buried softly on the pre-show. So I'm sure you saw my tweet. Is he complaining? I don't or know. Or is he just trying to do the job and get it over? I mean, I think that he knows that if he puts something like that out there, people will think that he's taking shots at the Cruiserweight Championship. Like, you can't be completely ignorant to that fact. You know that that's what people are going to take it as. But it might just be fun for him to see how people react to that kind of thing. I feel like Rusev's a good company guy at this point. All the stuff he's been through, all the jobs he's done, I just, I feel Did like you he's see his a tweet company. yesterday, though? He's just like, I'll see you Sunday, Drew Gulak. <laughs> like, there's a yeah. picture of Drew Gulak on 205 Live. It's funny. It's tongue-in-cheek. It's sarcastic. It's... But that's what I mean. Like, I think he's doing this more to put eyes on the kickoff show. Because I'm, I'm interested. Like, I'm going to watch the kickoff show. I don't think anybody out there is tweeting that... You know, like the tag scene is not tweeting about like, can't wait to share the show with the Cruiserweight Championship. I think like everybody's taking it this way and Rusev knew that they would. I don't know. I like it. I'm okay with it. It made me laugh. It's making it way more intriguing. He's he's putting eyes on the kickoff show. I tweeted out the Bury Me Softly uh, I know, song I saw that. right underneath and it's, <laughs> a bunch of people that. retweeted it and stuff. So it's getting a second run. So thanks for bringing that back. Rusev. I think I I still think. Uh, oh, actually, does almost almost is going to win? Yeah, because okay. the I'm Aiden and the Rusev thing has got to you know it's they got that's got to move on. Yeah, yeah, it's got to blow up. All right, we're on the same page. Oh wow, this is way down on the card here. Unfortunately, okay, this isn't in order. No, I know like, it's just, <laughs> but I didn't want to start with like yeah yeah no it's Lesnar and it's fine Joe and it's fine. Okay, let's it, get right into it. Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. This week on SmackDown was amazing. It got me super pumped. More that, than like, I already three was. three-part series? So good. I, it was it, nice. Because I, I didn't even think back to how far this feud actually goes. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a stretch, man, the, the whole eight-year thing. Like, it makes sense. Sure. And it's fun to bring it into the story. 
But like there was a nice like five, six year period in between all this stuff where they didn't touch at all. Yep. And they had no interaction whatsoever. But it's good that some they bring back some of this animosity. It is to be and part it's, of it. And it's something that they don't often do. No. And I'm the only thing that scares me is that is this the payoff? Because that's kind of the way they're selling it with these vignettes and going back eight years. Well, there's still no decision on whether he's staying or not, as far as I know. Man, they just announced his like he's a major part of two K nineteen. Oh yeah, that's right. Like he has a he's massive whole, story. Yeah, like they go back all the way. It's part like of the they showcase. Basically go, yeah, exactly. They go back to the start with him. If that's they wouldn't announce that, they wouldn't put it in the game if he wasn't signed. I love it. That was like the whole reason I even bought the game for a couple of years. Yeah, no, for sure. He's 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 part of the future of WWE. No no doubt in my mind. I never finished the Austin showcase. Actually, maybe we'll go home and play that after this. <laughs> you are home. Sorry, <laughs> wrestling terminology. Maybe Fair when enough. we go home, I'll play. 2K. Oh, I see. Got That's it. the bottom line. Going to play some Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin showcase mode on 2K, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> I think it's 2K16. Is he done cutting the grass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's probably still out there cutting the grass. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I actually don't know who wins this. I want to say The Miz so that the story keeps going, but... Daniel Bryan's going to win. I feel like Daniel Bryan's going to win. You know what? Just to keep it interesting, I'm saying The Miz. Bryan needs a win. This isn't the end here. Bryan needs a pay-per-view win. If they really want to, like... You know, springboard him into something. Daniel Bryan should win this, and then they should look at doing a Daniel Bryan AJ Styles thing to keep us interested for a few months. That or Daniel Bryan Joe, depending on how that match. That'd be great too. Um, Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin. Who cares to go to the other end of the spectrum? I hate this. They've fought so many times. Literally at the like the last pay per view, then they fought on Raw twice, I believe. Why is this on the SummerSlam card? I don't know. When you have like Oscar, thirteen not on the card. matches. Yeah, Oscar's it's, not even there. It's crazy. Bailey and Sasha not on the card. Not even on the kickoff. Yeah, I like, don't care about Bailey and Sasha. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, like you've got you're you're putting these two guys out here, who have wrestled four times in the last four weeks. Give me a friggin' break. I'll tell you why, pal. Because goddamn Baron Corbin's big, and Finn Balor's small. Unless they're doing it's David this. versus <laughs> Goliath. Fair enough. But unless they're doing this to advance Corbin, I'd see no point to this, and Balor wins. I've been enjoying Corbin lately. Me too. His character is good. He's a, he's kind of a like a whiny corporate. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. He's like the people at work that you don't like. Mm. You're just like, that eh, suck up. But I like that without this match. Finn Balor wins and ruins. Yeah. I don't, and I don't know how many times they can keep calling Finn Balor small. Yeah, it's, who cares? When nobody thought of him as small. Everybody thought of him as the guy with the cool demon gimmick. I, and miss, and the, stuff. I miss the demon, man. Like, I miss that Finn Balor. I don't know when they'll get back to it. I don't know. If I don't know will. how they get back to it. Yeah, he's um, got a snap. He's got a Johnny Gargano. In. Yeah, this is this is one hundred percent got to be for Finn. Finn's gonna topple. To yep. He's been being bullied by this dumbass for yeah. like months now. <laughs> he's gonna lose to Finn Balor, the small man. So okay, let's move on. Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> defending his title against Jeff Hardy and probably Randy Orton, who's just watching from the shadows that super was creepily. hilarious. <laughs> I laughed so hard. Jeff Hardy, you might have eyeballs on your eyelids, but I'm going to eyes wide shut your ass. It was so good. <laughs> mm, look at you out there, Jeff. You're going to get RKO'd out of nowhere so good. I, I don't really know what they were trying to achieve other than him being this predator. Hiding <laughs> other in, than I'm it. a super creepo. Oh man, especially our, our all creepo. the especially all the like controversy around him right now too. To show him being super creepy <laughs> was a little little oh, man, interesting. Or creepo out of somewhere. Yeah, don't shake that dude's hand, <laughs> man. If that comes out and that's actually a true thing, they're gonna have to do something. I uh, yeah, I haven't read that much into because it. because that'll well essentially essentially when new writers came on, he would whip out his junk, grab it, and then force the writers to shake his hand wow that's gross yeah so that's what all these things are about like don't shake randy's hand wow never heard that and then apparently there was a segment someone tweeted it and i don't even remember this but there was a segment where vince when he was still part of evolution and so on vince actually had the entire roster out on the stage to shake randy's hand yes yeah, and i, I saw mean, that like, yesterday oh and my I didn't god understand. i did yeah man now man, i get it if this actually comes out to be true it actually could be something that we'll have to keep our eyes on well anything in wwe ever come out to be true though it's such a weird like clandestine thing everything got past so writers coming out saying they'd never shake his hand so interesting it's something that it's it's enough that it could be something but anyways gross we, yeah gross anyway yeah um <laughs> jeff hardy I, needs, who wins needs this? to I lose don't know. this I, I, like Nakamura, Shin's got to keep the belt, right? Nakamura should keep the belt. Yeah. 
Um, and hopefully get interesting again. Yeah, hopefully get interesting again because his, his whole role has just been to be around while Jeff Hardy yeah. and Randy Orton have a feud. Which is <laughs> like, good. these guys have a problem, but meanwhile, Nakamura's here just kind of chilling and holding the title. And it, it makes no sense that <laughs> Jeff and Nakamura are wrestling, aside from the fact that it's like the ob- obligated return match. No, but I'm pretty sure that Jeff had his rematch. And that's when Randy came out and did the ear hole thing. No, oh, yeah, the ear hole thing. So it's not like he's getting it's his rematch. It's the weirdest clause. booking. It's like they wanted to do a feud with Jeff and Randy, and they're like, shit, Nakamura still has the title. Yeah. I guess we have to have them have a match somehow, and we don't want to blow it off on SmackDown and then somehow figure out how to have them have a match at SummerSlam. So that's just what we got. We have it, Nakamura versus Hardy. It almost would have been better if they did make it a triple threat, and Orton and Nakamura just kind of teamed up on Hardy and just beat the crap out of so him. weird. But it's, it's so it's weird. There's, weird. There's zero heat between Nakamura and Hardy, and it's no, all and Jeff and Randy. And I'm wondering how this finishes. Like, other than Nakamura winning, I'm, I'm wondering how Randy comes out and screws this match over. Someone... I, I, I don't know. It's so obvious to just have, like, a run in. It's got to be something someone else. Someone made a good point, and maybe it was you, actually. I don't know. But where Randy might come in, RKO Shin, so Jeff gets the belt, so that their match, their feud going forward has a belt involved. Yeah. Oh, which I could be fun. That. It'd be was cool that you? if Randy screwed over Nakamura, yeah. I feel like someone tweeted it to me. Anyways, Doesn't I matter. think I said something about that. Maybe. It'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, so that makes sense, too. Um, Could be fun. Anyway, uh, this is so out of order. Okay, let's go back to the pre-show <laughs> yeah, for I know, Cedric Alexander <laughs> versus Drew Gulak <laughs> with Rusev. <laughs> I'll be in that match too. I honestly don't like. I I could see Drew Gulak winning just for the sake Cedric's had it for a while, but I don't watch the show. Yeah, so I don't. I don't, I don't watch really Two or Five Live either, and I don't yeah. care honestly. I really it's, don't. It sucks because. These guys are killing it out there, but I just I know. don't watch it. It's unfortunate they took them off Raw, and now we don't see them anymore. That's Is why it, though? they should have just complained had... when they were on Raw. So it, it's not no, unfortunate. It's the, they they did it wrong. They should have introduced the cruiserweight title as its own thing and just had them as a part of Raw and SmackDown yes. and not done their own show. Sure, sure. They don't need they a show. Have just, they should have interacted with Raw the whole time. Yeah, they don't need a show. Yeah. They should have just been wrestlers, and yeah. guys should have dropped in and out of the cruiserweight yep. scene. You know for runs here and there whatever money though right you got to show that they can advertise for them. yeah i guess i'm sure they're raking it in with 205 live um i don't know cedric retains gulak wins rusev <laughs> rusev runs in and helps support through gulak man if he comes out during that match it makes the tweeting worse. he's it. just there to do commentary <laughs> could you imagine that'd be great um carmella versus becky lynch versus charlotte flair this is triple a threat this is a tough one i, don't, I actually don't know who to pick on this one I think uh, Becky Lynch wins, and then Charlotte goes nuts on her. You think? Yeah. I think it'll be the opposite. I think Charlotte wins, and Becky Becky goes to town. Yeah. She's she's gone too far the way of no. I'm I'm super happy for Charlotte. It's just gonna be tougher now for me. I just I feel like if Charlotte wins, she'll snap. Yeah. But on SmackDown, who was it that was kind of abandoning the other? It was Becky was like abandoning Charlotte with the teacups, right? Charlotte was like, oh, okay, you want to do teacups? And Becky just sort of walked away. Wasn't that, that on was SmackDown? Like a, yeah, that was an that's, exclusive see, that's thing too that came obvious. out on Twitter I feel, after. I feel like that's too much like foreshadowing. Yeah, maybe. I think that's too much making you think it's going to be Becky who's annoyed by it. Like yeah. Becky's been upset the whole time. Or the Becky's going to win. And then Charlotte's going to be like you know what? a sore loser. Carmella wins. Oh, Becky off. Lynch and Charlotte come to blows. Get out of Carmella here. gets the pin. Get out of here. Carries the belt into hell in the cell. Uh, um, why not? Why not? Why not? Dolph Ziggler with Drew McIntyre taking on Seth Rollins with the returning Dean Ambrose. He's a lunatic out there. You can't control Dean Ambrose. I'm not sure if I liked the way the return happened or I didn't. Or I, maybe I wanted something else that would be more surprising. Yeah, they they really like to telegraph stuff these yeah, days. Yeah, eh? right. Like I feel. I like thought maybe a certain lunatic, right? Huh? <laughs> hey, everyone. You know my guy, my hey, lunatic everyone. friend. <laughs> I mean, Dean Ambrose is coming back, you guys. I just, I almost hope he doesn't turn heel now. It would have been way better if he popped out at SummerSlam as being in Seth's corner and attacked him. That'd be so great. That would have been way better than now him being in his corner, pretending to be with him and attacking him. I just, I don't know. Uh, we'll talk about this stuff more in just two tweets. I'm saying Seth okay. Rollins wins and gets the IC title back, and then who knows what happens after. Uh, Braun I'm, Strowman. Oh, I'm go going to pick Ziggler. Okay. Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens, Money in the Bank, briefcase on the line. 
Uh, this is one I don't care about too much anymore, even though it has actual it's, title implications. It's super weird. We talked about this last week. I'm saying Kevin Owens Kevin finds Owens a way wins. to win the, yeah. the briefcase. Yeah, same. Let's nope, talk about. Nope, nope. I'm changing. Braun wins and cashes in. On okay. Monday, on Monday. All right. Uh, the Bludgeon Brothers. I guess we won't have to deal with Steve because he's outside. He's outside. Yeah. yeah. Uh, versus the New Day versus Kofi Kingston. Or <laughs> Big E, Kofi Kingston, and or Xavier Woods. <laughs> Sorry, I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, for the old SmackDown Tag Championship that, you know, we do or don't care about. Um, I don't know. It's weird because it's like the Bludgeon Brothers are boring me, but I don't think that the New Day should have the titles again because I think that they should just like move on to something new in the division. But I don't know who's right on the horizon. And that's, a, I was just trying to think of that too. Like, who could possibly come in and face the New Day as a new. Sanity? Uh, Whom sure. they just beat on SmackDown? Yeah. So I don't. Cleanly? I mean, maybe. I, I mean, I can hear them coming out and doing, the, you know, your five time champs, feel the power. The I can hear Usos all that. Usos again is like. But they can't do the Usos out. again. That was the bar, out. they beat them in the. Or the bar were beaten in the but you tournament. Know what, but you know what? The bar hasn't done anything on SmackDown since coming over. So I could see maybe that. Other than being in the tournament and losing. But I could see maybe they go that way. Sanity. Have the, have the bar and the New Day feuded yet on SmackDown at all? Uh, no. Other than the tournament, that's it. All right. So maybe, I don't know. It's just, I'm just bored of the Bludgeon Brothers. I think I want to see a change or I want to see them do more or be more involved. I think they're going to retain, honestly. Really? I think so. I'm picking New Day. Okay. Uh, let's do Alexa Bliss, Ronda Rousey. There's been a lot of hate for Bliss out there along the lines of Carmella being that they can't work in the ring and so on and so forth. And maybe she's maybe, not great. She's not great but maybe this week I, this week she, I feel like she looked way better and maybe it's just because she was in there with Ember Moon maybe that's but totally I, possible I actually thought that her and Ember had a great match it doesn't change that I think Rousey wins this and hopefully wins it fairly handedly you see how a lot of people are complaining already like that they think Natty's going to come back and get a big push now just because her dad died like what a Those shitty thing Terrible what a human beings. <laughs> awful way to think. Plain and simple, like terrible if, human beings. If they do give her a run, then good for her. I like in my thought process with if they were going to have Alexa Bliss retain, it was going to because going to be because Natty turned. Sure. So I can still see that happening. I, I don't can think see you that can turn Natty now, though. That's the same way that they couldn't turn Charlotte when Rick was sick. True. So I don't see them doing that now. True, but I like you can't you can't say that sort of thing. And even and even if it were the case, shut up. Like yeah, just ridiculous. Um, but I think Rousey wins this one. Yeah, and hopefully she. Hopefully it's not a fifty-fifty. Like no, Bliss has weird. got her shots in over the last couple of weeks, but this shouldn't be a close match. Let's give it to Rousey. Let's have her going into Evolution as the women's champion, who's retained a few times, and we'll have hopefully a big matchup for her. Well, and don't forget we got Hell in the Cell in between that too, right? So sure, yeah. So she'll but have to Hell face in the Cell is nowhere near as special as. No, no, no. Evolution. I'm just saying she has to face someone. After There's this, something so. before Hell in a Cell too. There's a September show as well. Hell in a Cell is September. No, it's October every year. Oh yeah, Evolution's in October. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. So also is a pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I, I. I think Ember Moon could get a little bit of a push. Maybe she goes off after Rousey after this, even though she's babyface. I don't know. I don't know. Rousey wins. That's Rousey my prediction. Wins, yeah. AJ Styles taking on Samoa Joe. I'm. I. I actually don't know who to pick on this one. And Coquina clutched these nuts, Samoa Joe. And I like that these two have barely been in the ring together other than the first attack by Joe. And him reading a note from AJ's wife this week was <laughs> amazing. The timing of shutting like the show down was so perfect. I was watching the timer on the on the bottom of the yeah. screen. I'm just like, dude, the, the, the he's running out of time. He's, like, he's, got like, he's got like 50 seconds, Joe. Get to the point. I like AJ just like, that's not. Come on, that's not my wife. Come, you son of a bitch. Come on, that's not. Oh, maybe it is, though. Well, you're a jerk. <laughs> Stupid. Maybe. Was that my wife? <laughs> On my screen, it ended right as he said her name. So I don't know what you're talking about. but Well, no. It was just you just saw AJ's face oh, after. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. kind of okay. like going through the motions. She's like, well, come what? on. That can't be. Why would you say that? Was it? What? Is she <laughs> Is she upset? What did I do? I don't know. It was awesome. It was to the point. These guys didn't come to blows the whole time. I'm super stoked for it's, this match. It's interesting to me how they can build such a feud on so little. Because all it is is Joe put him in a clutch once and then said some shit. 
good characters who can further a story without having to punch each other in the face. It's yep. just they're they're just good at what they do. Also, the shorter show, SmackDown, not a lot of airtime. True, it's good. It's good. It's good. True. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's, good. it's, good. it's so good. Uh, AJ is going to retain, though. I think Samoa is going to win. Wow, I, I feel that's like, a hot take. I feel like we've gone opposite. Well, I've done it on purpose for half of these, but don't give that away. I mean, kayfabe. I mean, <laughs> we disagree. We we disagree. No, I actually do. Like, I disagree. I wouldn't. I wouldn't not do it if I didn't think there was a chance. It's fifty fifty, right? Just fucking say what you think, and we'll move <laughs> on to the next Joe match. Wins. Thank you. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns for the WWE Universal Championship. They did the Paul Heyman thing too early. It should have been done at SummerSlam. I still think Brock wins. Yeah. Although, actually, my opinion changes a little bit because of what they did on Monday. I mean, this is one of the biggest angles of the week, and we haven't talked about it at all yet in the show. I thought it was fantastic. It was good. I just think it would have been better at SummerSlam where everyone thinks Paul's going to turn on Brock, and now we just don't see it. But what if they did it early so that everybody thinks that now there's oh no God, chance that if, Heyman's going to turn, yeah. and then he does turn? On Sunday. It's reverse, 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 reverse psychology. That's wrestling. <laughs> maybe. But if ever if it's if you know, if everybody's like, oh, I don't know, maybe he'll turn at SummerSlam or whatever. But this thing happens so early that everybody's now thinking, okay, so he's definitely on Brock's side. But that makes it more exciting if he does turn on Brock. <laughs> well, and I think here's what happens, bro. He says he's gonna turn, bro. Roman looks like he wants him to turn, and then he does it, bro, and then he does turn, and on Sunday they turn and then they turn at the end of that, bro, and then they turn on each other, bro. Okay. So there's a lot of rumors out there that Brock Lesnar has a meeting with Vince McMahon at 4 p.m. on Sunday, and that will actually determine the outcome of the, the show. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. That's it's, that's how we book Brock. It's going to be whether or not they can agree that he will work with WWE and UFC at the same time. If they can't agree, then maybe he loses. If they do agree, just I hope you hate Brock. The way we book Brock is we meet before the show, and then we just fucking figure it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's wrestling in general. Figure it out the day of. You're going to end the streak tonight, pal. <laughs> oh, man. Well, let's move on to just two tweets, shall we? Sure. The following segment was paid for by the ADCs of wrestling. Hey, yo. This is just two tweets. Two, two, two tweets. All right, two tweet me, bro. Let's do this. First, I want to start with a special shout out to Sir Patrick Dixon and Mike Gordon, who went out of their way to leave five star reviews and nice comments on what looks to be Apple Podcasts. So good on you. That's very nice of you guys. Yeah, thanks. I enjoy that very much. And I will always it helps, man. give credit to those it helps who a do lot. help out the rest of the foundation. Following up on last week, our friend Ethan S said uh, a question that was asked on the most recent pod. If you were a wrestler, what would your name be? Slash, what would your finisher be? What would said finisher be called? Uh, I actually have an answer to this. I put a little bit of thought into it, but more around my finisher than actually naming it. Okay. Go ahead. Well, when I was in like an E-Fed back in the day in high school, you know, you'd have like the little message boards. You'd like write your guys' stats down. And then like the guy who ran it would like sim matches. Oh, really? And you'd have no, to like write that. promos for them. It was super nerdy. But it was That's back. That's awesome. It was very like GeoCities, like 2001 like internet style. D&D wrestling. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was role playing. So my guy was Drew Scriver. Okay. And his finisher was the Scriver Screwdriver. Because Drew Scriver was just the reverse of Screwdriver. Got it, got it. And uh, that was the thing I, I would do. And then when I did Created Wrestlers on SmackDown and stuff, sometimes I would make that. And also sometimes I would just be Blackjack Drew Cox because I also like the number 21. <laughs> and I would just put like an ace on my tights and I'd be Blackjack Drew Cox. That's pretty good. That's so, pretty good. Anyway, watch out for that Scriver Screwdriver, brother. Nice. Put you down for three. So mine... Um I'll tell you my name in a, in a second. I've got an intro song as well. I've got my, my theme. So if you haven't ever heard of Mandroid Echo Star, and you probably haven't, they're... We were going to use them on this podcast. We were going to we use not. them for our intro song, but it didn't work out because the lead singer ended up having neck surgery and hasn't been able to sing for a little while. But they won a Juno in Canada um, for Best Metal Canadian album. Grammy. Canadian Grammy, essentially. Um, but they have a song called Paladin on their newest album that came out like two years ago. But... If you get a chance, listen to that song. You'll hear what I'm talking about. It's got a sick intro and then just has a wicked breakdown. Anyway, so that would be my song, Paladin by Mandroid Echo Star. My name would be Matt Star. I don't know why. I just thought of that right now on the t on the spot because <laughs> Mandroid Echo Star is the band, whatever. Um, okay. But my finisher, I don't know what I, I would name it, but 
I would do like I'd, I'd put a guy in a torture rack sort of situation mm-hmm. and then do like it would be like an uh, an attitude adjustment or an F5, but reversed into an RKO sort of thing. So, so you would do EC3's move. Is that what he? No, he it's doesn't. Totally do that. the one percent. No, no, no. He starts from the torture like this, rack, and then he throws the guy around and gives him. Yeah, a but mine would be different. It, there'd be a flip. There'd be a flip in there. He uh, just does it. He does it from like as if he's set up as an F five or an attitude adjustment. Yeah. Mine would be he'd be in a torture rack situation on his back, and then I would flip him into an RKO on his face. All right, I can't picture it, but you'll have to make it into. I'll do it to you. I'll do it. I'll do it to you later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'll yeah. do it to you later. I'll just sell the hell out of it. Yeah. For you. I don't know what I would name it though. All right. Uh, I also have like three pages of tweets here this week. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm either going to read them all or I'll skip some. But um, we'll go through as many as we can. We'll go through as many. But I'm going to be brief. This yeah, because I need to. I need to go. Uh, yeah, you do. Okay. Our boy Pete says, you know, basement Steve can't bring sexy back if you don't let him pour beer on his face. Uh, he was That's so true. ornery last week. And did you check the basement for little horn swaggles? They could be messing with the YouTube controls. Oh, I didn't even think of that. <laughs> Hashtag justice for basement Steve. Yeah. Yeah, he might be hiding under my ring downstairs. I have a ring it. downstairs. Of course you do. Yeah. I'll show you the move later in the ring. Right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's the only way to do it safely. Of course. Uh, Beef <laughs> asks, uh, just one question this week. Is it odd that I sing the ADCs of wrestling theme in my head almost every day? I think it's perfectly normal. Thanks, guys. You provide the best hour to two hours of entertainment every week. Six-star <laughs> podcast. It's Try like not a, to go to two hours. It's going to be three hours this week. Um. No, I th- that's actually a requisite. If it's you listen to the uh, ADCs of wrestling, you actually have to sing it to yourself three times a week, and if not, you're not doing your part. Mm-hmm. So uh, you're not allowed to listen anymore if you don't do that. Mm-hmm. Jeff Willis says, I can't be the only one who thinks Baron Corbin doing the bent over hair swing thing during his entrance is <laughs> odd without hair, right? No, you're not the only one. You're not alone. Yeah, no, I, totally. I mean, just do something yeah. a little bit different, yeah. right? My entrance has no hair. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. He just bends over and he's just like, check out my dome. Yeah. I shaved this. <laughs> hey, all you stupid marks, guess what? My hair's gone. My stringy hair. Finn Balor's little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hemiman2378 says... Is this new? I think this is a new guy. Nice. He says the WWE Championship has always been described as the most coveted title in wrestling. Why isn't the main event at pay-per-views? It's, why isn't it the main event at every pay-per-view? It's defended. I don't know. It's the most coveted championship in WWE history. That's the title that Bruno San Martino held, Bob Backlund held, Hulk Hogan held. It's the most coveted, most prestigious title <laughs> in professional wrestling history, Matty. <laughs> It's true. sports entertainment gold. We've talked about this at length. It it should be. It just it's weird that it's not. It's weird to think that AJ Styles and Samoa Joe will be buried in the middle of this show somewhere. This is awesome. It's the third match on the <laughs> card. We're already getting a WWE title match. Yeah, I don't. I it, we don't know what to tell you because it really should be at the end of every show. This uh, regarding Dean Ambrose, we got a couple tweets. Joe says uh, he's currently on vacation. In a few days, you'll be uh, with me in a long 14-hour drive back to the Midwest. That's fun, I guess. Hopefully, we can make it entertaining for you. He says as Ambrose returns to a huge pop, do you feel that'll translate into more if he turns on Rollins at SummerSlam? I, I think mean, everyone's his, expecting it at that point. I at know. this point, which is what makes it so hard. Here's the thing that sucks with wrestling: is we all expect it so much that they're not going to do it. Most likely. It's just going to finish. Amber's going to help them. They're going to do like the fist bump and it's going to be. That or know, if they do do it, then it just doesn't regular. feel good. Yeah. Because it's been ruined for us because we expect it. No, it would still feel good. You think? Yeah. Amber oh, looks amazing, know. by the way. He does. He does. Like he worked his ass off to get back. So and with, with that look, he's primed for a good heel run, too. He looks more like a lunatic. It's great. Like it's perfect character match. Uh, Chiluminati, the game, the gimmick changer DRE says <laughs> that is true. With Ambrose back and looking jacked AF, how likely are we to see the inevitable heel turn of Dean and Seth at SummerSlam to set up an epic feud? And how about a triple threat Shield match for the Universal Title uh, number one contender for WrestleMania? I mean, that's cool. We all you know talk about the triple threat WrestleMania match with the Shield guys. I'd be down, but um, for sure, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we just kind of answered that in the last one, so yeah. I think we expect Dean to turn, but. It might not happen, but it might happen. 
but it might not happen. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> as a fan, we like to come up with these elaborate things. We're all Vince Russo in our head. We think of the craziest Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And then they're all like, hold on, guys. Like, we have to get to WrestleMania. We have to do all kinds of stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah. we're not going to do all the, like, Heyman's not going to turn and it Dean's not going to turn. It all has to be done right now. Like, if you think Heyman and Dean and Charlotte and, like, Becky and everybody's all going to turn in one night and, like, Aiden English and Russo are going to implode <laughs> in one Like, a lot of the stuff is it's just going to be status yeah. quo. It's going to keep going. So let's hope for the best case scenario is like one of those five things happens and it's probably just going to be like the Rusev thing on the pre-show yeah but we'll see <laughs> yeah. um Steve O at Epic Steve O Times says rumor is that Bray Wyatt is getting repackaged and he even tweeted to bands asking for his new name as we talked about earlier in the show my question is how would you like to see him repackaged and what song would you choose for him mine in comments I don't know about what song. I would give him something from Every Time I Die. I love that band. Yeah, They're you dope. are a huge fan of them. Big ETID dude. I'm thinking they should go with something from like Newfound Glory. <laughs> like just change it right up. Go Newfound Glory. You'll like my friends. My, over I was going to say like my friends over you would be from, or hit, hit or miss because yeah. really that's been his career. Uh, remember break break comes out. I'm sick of smiling. <laughs> and so it's my job. I mean, he could just throw the the. Hawaiian shirt back on and it would kind of uh, work. Can the rest of the pod just be me singing <laughs> Newfound Glory songs? No, please don't. Uh, Although, I still listen back to some of those songs and I was like, man, I was a nerd, <laughs> but God, I love this. Slightly <laughs> bruised and broken from our head on collision. Hey, one of my favorite concert moments was seeing Newfound Glory open for Green Day at American Idiot. I was right on the guardrail yeah, I and I got to sing that. Hit or Miss yep. into the microphone. It was perfectly on uh, college time yeah <laughs> uh realistically i don't know i would honestly do like a what else do you do with a guy that looks like bray white you gotta do realistic. like a sanity gimmick adjacent basically nah, with him. change it up go completely different okay completely different maybe not newfound glory different but i, I don't want him to shave it like I, I wouldn't say shave your beard or anything like that have him but. cut his hair short Put him in like a suit and have him kind of walking around like smiling and normal and creeping people out and everybody's like bray and he's like how you doing man you like Oh. What's wrong with you? He's like, I'm great. This is a wonderful day. That I've could changed be my whole outlook on life, and I see things clearly now. And everybody's just like, okay, see, see you later, I guess. He's like, you have a great day. And he's just like weirding everybody out. And everybody's like, that this guy's about to explode. Actually, what is happening here? That would be cool. And then he does actually have like a psycho side where he does snap. Sure. I like it. I like that. That'd be kind of creepy and well, weird. I don't know what his music would be for that, but. No, I, I dig it. I don't know what his music would be either. Maybe it doesn't have to change, but maybe it does. Twilight Zone? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you just have Psycho Some, Sid's music. Yeah, yeah, something along like the Twilight Zone, just like... Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. He's in like a white suit and just like, um, hi. I dig it. I actually like that. Okay. Vince, figure it out. Uh, oh, I have another one from Hemiman here. Da, 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 da. I'll skip that one, unfortunately. Sorry, buddy. Uh, pairing things down here. Jonathan says, wanted to pick your brains for a moment. What silly off-the-wall pay-per-view names can you come up with? I know my personal favorite is Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> uh, going in deep. No. WWE presents Going in Deep. No. They, <laughs> no. Um, no, I got nothing. I'm not that creative. Okay. I, I really got to start looking at these beforehand so I can think about them. Uh, no, I got nothing. I don't know what to say. Going in deep is... <laughs> yuck, yikes. It's a silly name for pay-per-view. Wrecking Ball. Oh, WWE Wrecking Ball. Wrecking Ball. Awesome. And the it's just Miley Cyrus <laughs> floating back and forth. That on sounds fantastic. Ball. Well, I mean... WWE Implosion. It doesn't matter what it's going to be. It's going to be a flow ride a song anyway is the theme. So, <laughs> Yeah, no matter how ominous it sounds, it's going to be flow ride Do they have like, a deal with this guy? Do they have a deal with this guy? Like, I don't understand. I don't know. Like, flow rider stopped being... Kimmy, his name is also Florida. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, did he have many songs? you can't write that, pal. Past Apple Bottom Jeans? Did he have other songs? Yeah, he had other shit. <laughs> Stu Little says, does the Bludgeon Brothers synchronized entrance remind anyone else of something you'd see on a cuckoo absolutely. clock? Absolutely. Yes, it totally yes. does. They meet in the <laughs> middle, they turn at the same... Yes, absolutely. Bludgeon, bludgeon, <laughs> bludgeon, <laughs> dong, bludgeon, bludgeon, bludgeon. Now I'm picturing dong. it. Now I'm picturing it for sure. Fantastic. Wow. Wonderful imagery. Ryan Connolly says, if you guys got into a fight and had to choose one wrestler to back you up from any generation, who would you choose? Ooh. Also... 
have uh, referring to last week. It's cringeworthy how bad some wrestlers are at acting. So Paul Heyman just yeah, did good enough. acting comparatively. Yeah. So it's a relative Ooh, thing. Wrestlers Heyman. in our corner. Uh, I gotta just pick someone who's actually like legit crazy in real life. Um, Anvil would have been a good one. He yeah. was nuts. Yep. Um, who else is nuts in real life? Has bam, a reputation bam, bam, of being crazy. Bigelow. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, Vader. Yeah, I like Vader. my big guys. <laughs> Although Vader had a reputation of not being like soft, but getting his feelings hurt. I'm going character. Emotional I'm guy. going character. Okay, character. I'm staying kayfabe. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. He was crazy. I'm going to say Haku slash Ming because apparently that yeah, guy yeah. was like the most legit badass Brian and Pillman. nobody would fuck with Ming. Yeah, Brian Pillman. Pillman's great, but with, I swear to God, Ming would knock him the fuck out. With, with the Glock. <laughs> oh no <laughs> Pillman's got up You get back in that ring You get back in that ring what? right now You got a goddamn gun kid What the fuck <laughs> This is some crazy shit Good uh, question Good question I like these off the quest. Yeah yeah the totally questions. They're the best uh, Paul I don't know if it's Skivers 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 I'm gonna say Skivers no, Skivers uh, sure. He says Do you think the Becky Lynch Will turn heel in the triple threat match At SummerSlam I probably should have skipped that one Because we talked about it We did bunch. talk about it But um, no. I don't think so I don't think she will. Uh, Raider Max, friend of the show, is his new handle. Oh, he changed it. Nice. Oh, all the time. This is a great one. Uh, he says, yet another fantasy match pick them for you guys. Which tag team match would be better? APA versus the Road Warriors, Revival versus the Heart Foundation, or the Dudleys versus Demolition? Hashtag Foundation Pride. Hashtag Foundation is growing. Yes, it is. This, this is, is our last week was our most downloaded show, by the way. It was. We didn't even mention that. Yeah. Um, I, will, I, will, I will say I really like these, Raider. Keep com- keep them coming because these these are these great are and you're actually like putting thought into these yeah and they're great. I this one to me is easy because I love the revival and obviously the Heart Foundation were top notch so that's a super easy one for me. The revival versus the Heart Foundation that's great. I like that one. I also I also like that matchup a lot. But I gotta say, I think the best like drag them out, beat them up brawl would have been APA versus the Road yeah, Warriors. Yeah. Like, if you took them both, obviously it's hard because they'd have to both be in their prime. But you take, like, the Road Warriors from, like, the NWA in the late 80s, and you take the yep. APA from, like, 2000 when they were just demolishing people. They didn't care. Just drinking beer and beating people to shit. <laughs> it was the best. I think that I could take the shit out of the Road Warriors. What do you think, Ron? Well, damn. <laughs> That'd be a hell of a match, Bradshaw. <laughs> then you get the Road Warriors cutting promos to be like, well, drinking beer. And smashing heads and contusions to the skull of redneck Texans are things that excite the Road Warriors. Oh, what a rush. <laughs> How does that feel on your throat? It hurts a lot. Because like, I, I, I see it and it looks like it's, it's very vibrating. Painful. It looks terrible. <laughs> it's, it's a horrendous voice yeah. to do. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go downstairs like now and record some Ultimate Warrior yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah. for something to wrestle. And it's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to be painful. <laughs> yeah, you're bleeding. I see it. Yeah. You can see it from inside your mouth. Mm. Anyways. I just died. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I think that's it. I think so. We had a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoy SummerSlam. Uh, NXT up. is probably going to take the weekend, so be ready. Like they do every time. <laughs> they always take over. Yep. That's what their whole oh, thing is. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, I saved it to the end. I hate you. No, that's sweet. <laughs> follow this hateful, spiteful person at Matt the Markiest on Twitter. You can follow me at Andrew David Cox. Also, you can reach the show at ADCs of Wrestling pretty much everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, but something else. We'll ignore that for Where now. Is, what is it on YouTube? It's the ADCs of Wrestling Cox at YouTube.com slash Andrew David Cox. It's, it's very funny. convoluted. It's it makes no funny. sense. I still try every day to change it's that. It's funny. And uh, it hurts my soul. We'll see you next week. Ball game. Peace. Ooh, what a rush. Ah, Steve really cut my grass. Let's take a look back here. Oh, my God. Steve? What?